Hello, people. Um, I read a report the other day in the newspaper um, concerning sexual assault and rape levels, and um, the figures are quite shocking, to be quite honest. Um, basically, this was a joint review by the, I'm just reading off the paper here, by the Ministry of Justice, Home Office, and Office for National Statistics. So they're three um, uh, prominent organisations, um, bodies, so to speak. And this was a joint review. And the findings show that every year in Britain, there are 473,000 victims of sexual offences. Out of that, 53,700 sexual offences were recorded by police. I presume the others are based on um, interviews, um, sort of polls, that sort of thing. And of that, 5,620 convictions. Let's just put that in context. 5,620 convictions out of 473,000 um, sexual offences, which it, it expands beyond rape. That also includes sexual assault. Uh, presume it includes decent exposure and other things, but um, that's a truly shocking statistic. Um, the pathetically low number of convictions in relation to that high number of um, of offences. Now, um, I I agree, or I I would acknowledge that there may be some flaws with the report. I.e., a lot of those findings are going to be from people who have said that they were a victim of sexual assault and I think it's very hard to determine exact figures but whatever way you look at it um, even if it's a few thousand more or less it's clearly a very big problem um, I think it's fair to say the majority of those victims will be women uh, there will be men as well um, I'm not sure if that's referring to children including paedophilia I presume it's I presume it's um, all cases, I, I'm not quite sure, it doesn't say so in the report, but uh, I'd just like to talk about the broader implications of this. I believe it is a big problem that victims of rape, which are predominantly women, um, don't receive enough justice. Um, we have a situation in this country whereby I think what's happening is women are being frightened to come forward. In fact, it says uh, in this report, it states that um, there's a range of reasons. Yeah, women said they were too embarrassed, the offence was too trivial, in inverted commas, or they did not think officers could do much to help. Now, it's true that there is varying levels of um, sexual offence. So, for example, um, slapping a girl's bottom isn't in the same level as rape rapes a destructive life-changing crime slapping a girls bottoms embarrassing and uh, it's inappropriate but there's different levels nevertheless I think there is a serious issue here and that is that victims of these crimes um, do clearly don't feel that the justice system is helping them and that's a really big problem what we need in place is a situation where women and men because you get you get gay rape as well, and um, victims of gay rape shouldn't feel intimidated about coming forward in case they're met with homophobia or anything like that. They they should feel uh, the confidence to go forward as well. Rape is rape. It's an uh, appalling crime. Um, but the vast majority of cases are women, and I, I can imagine few things worse than having someone force themselves on you um, without your consent and to have them force sexual intercourse on you it's it's utterly appalling and there's absolutely no excuses for rape there's, and anyone who blames the victims is an idiot um, I, you know to say it suggests that women provoke it by the clothes they wear or anything like that is utterly absurd um, as men we can control ourselves we all have the ability to do that, um, or at least, you know, any decent man would. Um, 
being I made another video similar to this about sexual harassment in the Shanghai subway and it's one thing being turned on by a woman but it's quite another to act, act on that so if you see a girl who you find sexually attractive that that's one thing that's a human reaction but um, any decent man would have self-control and not not act on it um, of course this I made a video recently about the situation in India which is very topical right now but the truth is this sort of uh, problem exists the world over and um, political ideology isn't doesn't change that so being in a democracy doesn't won't change violence against women but what what needs to be addressed is how the justice system works I, I really do believe it needs to be a lot more um, accountable to victims of these terrible life-changing crimes um, and I'd just like to send out a message to so-called MMAs, men's rights activists, MRAs I should say. Um, one reason I don't call myself an MRA, even though I'm I'm against feminism in many ways, is because MRAs, some of them, um, deny that these things happen. They deny that um, sex crimes do occur against women. Um, and I just don't like their attitude to that. There's also... Um, you know, I, I've been in the company of other guys who have treated women in a bad way, and I've um, recently I was in a situation. Uh, it wasn't. It it could have been a lot worse, but basically, um, I was in a small group of people. Two of the guys I were with, um, one of them was sort of passive, but the other guy was like the girl that we were with, and he um, he was quite drunk. She was she was a little drunk as well, but. She told me that she wasn't interested in this guy and he kept coming on to her and she seemed to be sort of coming to me as some sort of protection, which was an interesting position to be in because I wasn't, she wasn't my girlfriend or anything like that. So, but I, I did feel a little wary and I wanted to be, because I was quite sober at this point, I, I wanted to just be around her just in case he tried anything. Now nothing happened, but that is an indication there are guys out there who won't take no for an answer. And who will try to force her way onto women? Um, I I phoned her that night to make sure she was okay. I I, I walked home with her as much as I could. Um, the people I were with were from the same country. Um, they they weren't British. They were from another country, but I won't say which one because that'll just that will distract from the sort of the main issues of this video. But basically, were people I was socialising with that night. Anyway. Um, the truth is there are men out there who won't take no for an answer and who will impose themselves and who have no self-control. Um, now, one thing the MRA has often come out with is they'll cite cases whereby innocent men have been falsely accused. That's certainly been a problem. There are some very sick, twisted women out there who, who have accused innocent men. Whether that's um, some sort of warped revenge on mankind or whether they they've had an argument with their boyfriend and they want revenge on him or there's been a variety of cases that's been reported in recent years where the only way those women were exposed is because different men told the same story and those men didn't know each other so so the liar was exposed now i believe these women are utterly despicable and i believe they should receive a, a stiff custodial sentence because they ruined the man's life for that and i also think we need to change the situation that a defendant's name can be plastered all over the press before he's been found guilty. Um, I, I don't think, I think both the defendant and the accused, sorry, the defendant and the, the victim uh, should have all anonymity before um, the result of a trial. Because in this country, we must have the mandate of innocent until proven guilty. And because these cases have arisen, then the media shouldn't have a right, especially talking about the tabloid press, shouldn't have a right to um, sort of vilify a man who's been accused of rape when he may well be innocent. Um, having said that, so that's my stance on those type of women. I think they're utterly despicable and they deserve to never be trusted by any man ever again. And those type of women are every man's worst nightmare. Um, you know, the worst situation in rape cases was when it becomes 
his word against hers. Um, and that's a very difficult situation. There's also, in my opinion, a very grey area when alcohol is involved. Um, I Let's say both people are very drunk. Um, I do believe there are situations when the woman regrets having sex and then she'll she'll use the rape card having said that i my concern is that with these cases being highlighted and they should be highlighted um there's a risk that that will put off genuine victims for coming for coming forward and there are many innocent women out there who've done absolutely nothing wrong and they have been the victims of brutal cruel sex attacks those women and men need to have the confidence that the criminal justice system is going to treat them sympathetically and with, with respect. Um, the way I see it is the police have a responsibility to to take these things seriously. No woman should feel that she can't come forward. Clearly there's a problem in the system. Now I'm not going to point at any police force and say they're not taking it seriously. But clearly there is a reason why uh, victims of these assaults are not coming forward and getting justice. Maybe they feel it's a waste of time because they're not going to get justice anyway. Maybe they've been threatened by the person because in many cases they know their attacker. Um, but, you know, rape's an absolutely appalling, destructive crime that can... Um, I read in the paper that the manager of Rape Crisis Centre said that these women get a life sentence. And I can imagine that. I imagine that sort of experience never leaves. Um, it's a brutal, destructive crime, one of the worst crimes possible, and certainly one of the worst things a man can do to a woman. So it should result in a very hefty punishment, a long custodial sentence. But clearly, within the justice system, this is deeply flawed. On one hand, you have had cases where innocent men are being accused. On the other hand, you have the vast majority of actual rape cases go unpunished, and that's absolutely disgraceful. Um, what I propose is a situation that enables the innocent to get justice and the guilty to be punished. That means innocent victims of these things, of these crimes, having the confidence to come forward for their claim to be taken seriously, to be treated sympathetically. And if uh, in due process the person is found guilty, they receive a stiff punishment. Um, and the woman can receive... Uh, she, you know, it's and it sickens me that some people will blame the rape victim herself. It's that's a warped concept. Um, rape is a brutal crime, and rapists are one hundred percent responsible for their own actions. I'm running out of time on this video, so I, I want to just quickly talk a little about what, what I mentioned a while about grey areas. Um, in my mind, rape is forcing sex onto someone who doesn't want it when they've clearly said no now i am a little uncomfortable with the idea of and this might be controversial but i'm uncomfortable with the idea of two people having sex they're both drunk and uh when details aren't remembered i have a problem with that being considered rape because it's simply too the circumstances are simply too vague to know for certain in those cases, maybe the best way is a lie detector test. That might sound cold, but um, maybe it is the only way to determine guilt from innocence. And the innocence would have nothing to fear. Now, my understanding of these tests is they're 98% accurate. Of course, is that 2% of uncertainty. But, you know, this can never, ever be absolutely exact, even with evidence presented, etc. Unfortunately, it can never be absolutely exact. But what we need is a situation where this is a disgraceful statistic. It's letting down women. It's letting down victims of these crimes. And that's awful. They should have the confidence to get justice, to be treated sympathetically, um, and not fear that they're going to be regarded as sort of uh, loose or a slut or a liar uh, and my message to guys would be fellow men uh, and especially MRAs look I know there are some twisted women out there who have been found guilty who have been exposed as false accusers that is true and they're despicable 
every man's worst nightmare. But let's not pretend they are. Let's not pretend that every woman is like that. There are many innocent women who have suffered and who deserve justice and are not represented by um, these despicable false accusers. You know, rape is one of the worst things a man can do to a woman and lying about rape is one of the worst things a woman could do to a man. So what we need is a situation where the innocent get justice and the guilty are punished. I have to leave it there.